show you this. Uh, I, I actually won a, I won a little silver award for. Oh wow! The, for the Spectrum Fantasy Art. Book. Oh, that's so cool. You know, yeah. you know, you know what's you know what's cool too. My friend Anthony Kosar is the one that made that. Oh yeah! Oh man, this is so awesome. Yeah, he sculpted that's so cool. it. Isn't that yeah. cool? Yeah. Yeah, it that's is awesome. It's cool. I was like, I can't believe I actually got something. I never <laughs> won anything in my life. That's awesome, man. What, what did you win it for? Free throw contest. That's that's <laughs> one other. Uh, what uh, was? Trophy. What was it that you won it for? Oh, uh, this one was uh, concept art. Oh, okay. Like the the, the Dharmalaje, actually. That's what oh, won cool. the silver award. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, cool, it, was, man. it was a surprise. It was good. It's cool. Now uh, they have that's me as right. a judge for the next book. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to enter something then. Wink, wink. No, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, All right, man. Well, we're rolling. Um, and uh, basically, uh, hey, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, this is really exciting. Um, I love this guy's work. He's worked on tons of awesome Marvel movies. I'm a huge fan. Um, and it's really exciting just because, like, you know, my daughter's, um, especially my 12 year old, is obsessed with Marvel movies. And it's so much fun. You know, when I was a kid, I, I, grew, up, I grew up just like reading the comics and drawing comics. That's kind of how I got into drawing was like lots of Spider Man and um, a lot of Batman and everything. Um, and then, so it's so cool to, for me as an adult now to, 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 to be able to see my, my comics alive now. And it's really cool. And it's so much fun to be able to hang out with my kids and, and, and enjoy these together. And so uh, this is one of the guys that, that's, that's a part of making that world happen, and it's just so awesome. does amazing work, um, and uh, I hope to get into a lot of cool stuff. So anyways, without further ado, please welcome Anthony Francisco. Thank you for having me, Jason. Yeah, this Same is awesome, man. <laughs> you know, Marvel has been such a big part of my life growing up. So finally, to be working on Marvel stuff is just amazing. I can't. I finally, the te technology caught up with how you know the yeah. comic books look like. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing, man. Like, there's so many. I mean, I love. There's so many the, the Marvel movies that I love. I basically love all of them. But uh, yeah. but there's there's like these great things that I'm really appreciating from one of my. You know, and I know it's just fans are creating these movies you know because yeah. you can see certain shots where it's like oh my gosh that's straight from this comic book that exact yeah, shot yeah. and I, I love that kind of fan service you know it's just like it's the coolest thing yeah um, we're, we're all the artists that are fans ourselves so we want to see uh, the like a translation from the comic book into film and not to yeah. change it to what i think is you know my own way but the thing is the way i think is the way I want it, is the way a fan would want it, because I've been a fan, you know. Yeah. That's life. always frustrating when when you go to see a movie with a character that you care about so much, and then you're just like, what? Why yeah. would you do I, that? Why is it all black leather? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <So> why is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, it's it great. And that's the thing, too. I remember, like, gosh, when the first X-Men movies came out, and it was like, it was almost like they wanted to be so realistic that they were staying away from what the characters looked like in the comics, like trying to come up with new yeah. things so it feels real. And that's one thing I love about Marvel right now is that it's like, no, Spider-Man's wearing spandex. Okay, yes. it's awesome. But and of course yeah. they add, they you know, they make it. You know, Iron Man looks like Iron Man. It's like, that, thank you. <laughs> that Iron Man came out first. I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, and yeah. how are they gonna make the story? But you know. They find the right directors to give life to the characters. And it, I don't know if you've noticed, but the directors that they do hire have a lot of like character development skills in their repertoire. Oh, yeah. right? It's not just they don't even look for really visual uh, masters. It's more like a character uh, and, and emotion people that could tell stories with that more. So, yeah, you know, Iron Man was was a good story, good character. You know, oh, it's character amazing struggles. story amazing yeah and you know it's funny Robert Downey, right? Robert oh dude Downey. i remember yeah. when i first saw like a, a trailer for iron man i was like 
my first response was, why are they making an Iron Man movie? Because it's like, I, I never got into <laughs> Iron Man. This cool? <laughs> and I, I just always thought Iron Man was kind of like, oh, that's kind of like one of the lame ones. And now, yeah. of course, he's one of the best ever. You know, it's like, yeah. wow, it's, it just really, um, you know, I think this is the same thing with Pixar. Um, it's very similar with, with Marvel. They're being so smart about it because, like, they realize that story is king, right? Yes. Like, you got to have, like, a strong story before, you know. And unfortunately, there's a lot of movies being made. Um, dude, I just watched the new Hellboy last night. I don't know if you've seen that. No, I haven't. Uh, but it's okay. You could spoil it for me. I, I just don't watch it with a loaded weapon around because you might use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just it's just really sad because, um, you know, the guy playing him is the guy from Stranger Things. He's a good actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. He looks good as Hellboy, but. Oh my gosh, man! There's no story. The uh, special yeah. effects are just probably you would probably just get a kick out of it because of how bad the special effects are. Yeah. It's like what in the world? It's 2019. Oh, wow. Like what's happening here? That's so crazy. It's a. And the it's first a, one when the first the first one that came out was oh yeah, pretty it was cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's weird how that happens, but but um, what I'm curious about with you, man, is like. So we we met in person in uh in uh at Lightbox in Pasadena, Lightbox, which is really yeah. cool. We had our table My next first to each other. Ever like con kind of yeah. artist on that video. Oh, that was that was your first. Yeah, one? yeah. Oh wow, how did you like it? It's pretty cool. Uh, I liked it. It was pretty cool. I mean, I got to you were right across from me, so I got to meet a lot of different artists that I admire already, and I got to be with my other coworkers there. I, I was just not as prepared because I didn't have posters yeah. ready to go, but I did have. The art book, you know, I, I, you got to see, check it out. The yeah, it was awesome, dude. First ever art book. book. Yeah, that's awesome, man. No, your stuff's yeah. really, really cool. Um, I want to get into that, but actually, I want to go back because I'm really curious yeah. about your about where you came from and everything. Because what the little I know is that you you were born and raised in the Philippines, and oh, what I'm curious about is this. Um, you know, I've never been in the Philippines. I had a brother-in-law that that um, was living there for years, and he would send me pictures. It looked beautiful, but I don't know much about it. But I do know that it's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I always think of World War II whenever I think of the Philippines because of you know yeah. everything that happened. But you, how did you go from being in the Philippines to being an, an artist for Marvel? I mean, when did you come to the United States? And when you were a kid, were you drawing when you were there, like into comics and I'm just so yeah, curious. Yeah. It's amazing to like, me that it's it's just awesome. Uh, thank you. It was it was a, it, I guess it. How do you say it? It's like uh, you would have never thought about it because I, I loved movies ever since I was younger, and you know, comic books. X Men was one of the first comic books I had, and then growing up, but like five years old, I'd be sketching like uh, you know, little line work. Uh, drawings without any hands or feet because I couldn't draw hands that well back then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were exposed to a lot of stuff. I, and going back to what you said, well, usually when you think about the Philippines, maybe it's World War II or something like that. Yeah. Right? But um, it's it's um, but there there was a big comic book culture there, and um, now they play Magic the Gathering. It's actually really nice there now in the Philippines. When I was growing up there, it was during um, the Marcos regime when. Uh, there's just just a lot of killings going on and a revolution, you know, that happened. Um, but through all that, um, comic book was still that outlet I had, you know, yeah. to, just just to escape stuff. Plus, at school, um, I, I don't know, art wasn't really seen to be. I mean, I did art because I love to do it, and I didn't think I'd make any money doing that. And yeah, I'd, I'd watch Star Wars over and over again, Back to the Future over and over again, you know that that kind of stuff. And you never, you never was taught that that's a, an art, you know, job you could go get into. And you never you, uh, coming yeah. to the United States, I came to LA first, and I didn't know I was in the hub already, and because <laughs> the people around me didn't know anything about art, you know. So um, I think, I think, how did I get to Marvel? I, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years already, concept art. Yeah. So my very first movie I worked on was uh, Bubble Boy. Do you know Bubble Boy? Have you seen that? Bubble Boy. Jack Gyllenhaal. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's one of Man. his first shows. If you watch in the special features, you actually see some of my work there. Oh, that's uh, cool. It's still in pencil. 
Yeah. Wow. So, so you've been doing, um, you've been doing concept work in LA for 20 years already. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So what, what, what got you to LA? Did you come, did you go to art school here? Well, um, actually, no, I didn't go to art school. I went to this place called Associates of Art. That's my first kind of real, like, high-level artist teaching there, like pros, you know. And that was, like, I think, 97, 98. Oh, okay. Um, so that was in Van Nuys area. And the guy who was running the show, he used to do posters for um, Police Academy uh, oh, posters. Oh, yeah. He did a Total Recall poster, I think. Or oh, that's something. awesome. Yeah, uh, his name is Mark Westermo. Oh, so cool. It's his school that, that I kind of found when I was going to PCC for art classes, and I didn't take any like English or math, nothing, just all art <laughs> classes. I don't want to. Awesome. <laughs> you know? And my yeah. mom was like, well, Are you not trying to graduate? I go, I don't need grades. I just need to, <laughs> to yeah. draw. You know, I just need a portfolio. <laughs> That's, uh, that's awesome. what I th- thought, you know, at the time. But there's also Art Center. I actually know about Art Center Pasadena um, back then, but it was just too expensive to get in. Mm. And I would, but I would visit it every so often just to see the gallery and get inspired and stuff like that. But um, when I found Associates of Art, that's when I really started learning, you know, the craft and meeting more people uh, that wanted to do what I did. I uh, wanted to do uh, that are doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, it was a crazy journey. Uh, I, I got lucky to meet the right people, good friends that helped me out to get to where I, where I am now. Um, and, I, and I taught for a little bit in Associates for a little bit in Nomen. And that's how I met uh, Ryan um, Minerding, the head of visual development, and um, Andy Park and um, Jackson Say. They were uh, once my students before when I was teaching at Nomen, I was teaching together with another friend, uh, Kevin Chen. So I think, because I taught a lot and I met a lot of people that way, then then you get help later on. You know, if you're kind to people, they're kind back to you. I think that kind yeah. of good positive energy works. You know, um, and and I guess just being genuine. I think I think you just have to. Um, and working hard. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, yeah. It's a lot of hard work. That's yeah, awesome, and work hard, definitely. So, what's some of the first movies that you that you got to do concept besides the Bubble Boy? Because that's there's, there's a lot of. Because I just thought of you as like doing Marvel stuff, but I didn't realize it was even before that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. Um, I think one of the other ones. Well, well from the beginning, it was Bubble Boy. Then I worked on uh, Spider Man. You know, the first one with Sam Raimi. Oh, okay. I wow, on that's that. awesome. Well, I was more in the special effects studio. So yeah. um, what happened was uh, Jordu uh, Schnell, he, he's a sculptor, and he worked on uh, uh, Alien, Bris- uh, Alien Resurrection, I think. And at that school, so as far as that's where I met him, and he started his own school. Mm. And me and my friend uh, were taking classes from there, and the owner of ADI was there. So the story was I, I was still kind of shy back then, and I wouldn't, like, just push myself out there to just meet them. But he introduced mm-hmm. my other friend who's like a little bigger guy and Carlo, and he's a little more on the talkative side, on the braver side. And I was just like <laughs> behind him trying to get, oh, when, when can I talk to, the, to, to Alec, Alec Gillis, the owner of um, ADI. And, um, but luckily Alec just saw me back then. Are you also an artist? And I go, yes, I am. And, <laughs> and finally I got to talk to him and he was like, do you have a portfolio? And, and at that time I didn't have one, but I had to go, yes, I do have one. Um, can I give it to you two weeks from now? Cause it's still at art center being, you know, reviewed or something. It's like, Oh shit. I got to like draw something in two weeks, you know? <laughs> so um, I kept on drawing, kept on drawing and some creature design. Cause I started off as a creature designer first. Oh, okay. And, and his, his studio just, you know, designs creatures and stuff for special effects. But after two weeks, I, I kind of put together like a little, um, portfolio thing, but it, it wasn't that good. He wasn't impressed, right? That not that much. And uh, he asked to see my sketchbook, and I think um, when he saw my sketchbook, that's when I, 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 he gave me a lot of confidence with the, with the, um, with the good stuff he was saying that that he could see me thinking and designing because in my sketchbook were more like notes and and experimental shapes for creature heads and and um gadgets and stuff like that so that's and then that's how i got my first job 
over That's awesome. there. That's so cool, yeah. man. That's awesome. Chronicles um, of Riddick was another one. Chronicles what? of Riddick. I worked oh, on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You know, the so Vapo, cool. the commander guy with the hair, his hair went up a little bit. Like, oh, yeah. Really nice. <laughs> kind of. That's yeah. so cool, man. That's awesome. I mean, it, it's got to still be a thrill even to this day, though. Every time you see, when you see the work actually being used in a movie, you know? You know what I mean? Like that's just because that I, I imagine that would never get old. <laughs> you know, it it doesn't. Well, especially at Marvel, Marvel is so different from every place I've worked on. Um, usually in other places, it's um, you do a design, you do multiple design, they choose one, and it kind of changes as it reaches the end result, and you see some of your stuff there or, or yeah. overall. So, but at Marvel, they kind of stick to what you have almost all the way through. I think that's why the ownership there is much better. Uh, my experience at like Baby Groot, when I had that design approved, I kept on designing Baby Groot all the way from the pot to the Teen Groot you see in Endgame. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. A, ownership is really, really awesome over there. Man, that's Plus such a, all- that was such a fun job to, you know, just I'm just imagining my, myself just being like getting to draw <laughs> these characters. It's so cool. Um, that's another one of those movies that – when I first, I, I never heard of Guardians of the Galaxy before, and I was like, "What the hell is this, a raccoon?" <laughs> and like, it, it just seemed like this does not feel like, like Iron Man or, like, but the way that they were, like, I was super impressed with that movie just because it was so good, <laughs> and it was that, just that like, was the first one I worked on. Oh, was, that's, that's what I was hired for for three weeks yeah. just to aliens. <laughs> but oh, that's awesome. That eight years later. <laughs> Seven. seven years. Oh, it's been seven years since that. Yeah. Since well, you that. probably worked worked on it a few years before it came out. I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah. That, totally. That's crazy. Yeah, because I still remember like when I first saw the trailer for that one, and I was like, "What is this? What is Marvel doing?" And of course, you, it was awesome. Friends, Same. Yeah. I mean, it's so, like my friends, they were telling me, "What are you working on at Marvel?" And I go, "Guardians of the Galaxy." They were like, "What's that? What's Guardians of the Galaxy?" Yeah. No one knew. Yeah. It's it was, and it it just came out with a huge bang, like a punch. I mean, it was so good, you know. And then I just what I really love too is, you know, like like for like the first Thor movie, I, you know, it's okay, but I kind of was like ah, you know. Second one, eh. and then Thor Ragnarok comes out, uh. and it and it just was like <laughs> that's one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's just it's it's hilarious. Um, the the style is so awesome, but you you it's get Jack that Kirby, Guardians. Result. Yeah, you get that Guardians feel in there as well, and that's why it's so perfect. I love at the end of uh, the last film how it's like, um, as Guardians of the. Ga- I was like, that is so perfect. It was like, man, they're, they're doing they're doing it right, man. So it's got to be exciting yeah. being able to work on these projects, um, and I'm sure you're working on a bunch of stuff now. You probably can't talk about, but yeah, uh, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, much, but... I'm curious about your your approach. Um, when you're doing this kind of work, like let's let's just go let's go back to the Guardians. Like when, okay, yeah, when yeah. Uh, you start working with them, what's your process like? Like, are you do they just give you um, descriptions of certain things, and then you just kind of just start going at it with what you think, or are you re- are you looking at the comics as well and trying to pull from that and bring it to you know a little original idea? Or? For Guardians, is kind of interesting because. Um, it is like a brand new avenue that Marvel's trying to do, right? It's space. What's a space opera? How does that look like? You know, yeah. uh, you, you have Star Wars there and you have, um, well, Star Wars, like the man, uh, um, what's what his name? Uh, Star Trek, right? Like how, how can we feel different, you know, but still kind of have that same iconic kind of feel as these other movies um, and, uh, and making it, I guess being more colorful was one of the ways. Oh, yeah. And Charlie Wen was the head uh, uh, of our department for that show. And he actually really um, kind of set up like this colorful kind of palette that we all kind of followed. Uh, but we were also allowed to, 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 to give different takes on how this world could look like with the aliens and stuff, you know? So yeah. we had like really... Um, scary aliens and not so scary aliens and more like just normal star trek kind of aliens right and if you notice uh, in the movie there's like 
a range of aliens types. Oh, yeah. But within certain worlds, um, you, you have just colored aliens. And at first, I, I wasn't sure how that was going to work, you know? And yeah. when you see the movie, you're like, wow, it, it works well. Just the color, but then with some little uh, uh, little um, uh, material changes on, on the cheekbones, you know, like with um, with Gamora, right? That one looked pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, um, and, and it so, still but, felt pretty original, you know? Yeah, it still felt Which, original, but familiar, yeah. right? Yeah. It's very interesting. We, didn't, we, we had a lot of different patterning on the skin to see if that worked well. Um, uh, also, sometimes I like to design in terms of, um, for myself, like in my mind, thinking, okay, what if it was just a $100 budget and then a $10,000 budget? How would the character look like? You know, mm. so background characters to foreground characters and if you think of budget wise that way like it just has to be a pants with a shirt and how do you make that shirt feel more alien if it's just a t-shirt right so there are ways that i myself was trying to give myself parameters um so i could design different looking aliens in in terms of budget right mm. it's interesting it's an interesting way to do it <laughs> yeah that is That's, that is interesting that's funny. Uh, I, so I found too when 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 I design costumes, I want to try to go from you know naked body first and clothe them as uh, like in layers so that yeah. I turn that on and off. So then I get different mixtures of variations. Another good way to come up with variations and a way to make it feel like you're actually dressing the character. I mean, that's not the only way. That's just one of the ways. The other way is just to go with silhouette and shapes and just try to see how that fits. Um, yeah. but the way it just feels more like, um, like, a um, how do you say this? Like you're, you're intentional, you know, a shirt goes here. Okay. A rope goes here. So what goes on the rope, you know, a little mm. more, uh, you have to think a little harder. How, how many, uh, do you start with, um, like, are you mostly just working digital or do you like get in your sketchbooks and cause I, was... yeah, I do. I do get to my sketchbooks. I, oh man, I wish I had that. Uh, especially with the Dora Milaje stuff, I, I, I sketched everything out first, but really rough ideas of how patterns could look like. You know, uh, same with Guards of the Galaxy, I sketched Baby Groot out first. Um, just because sometimes, I don't know if what it does, but when I sketch, is a different way of thinking. And when I paint in Photoshop, yeah. it's different. It's like Photoshop, I can keep on undoing stuff. Sometimes I, I do watercolor studies, mm. just because you have to paint from back to front with watercolor. And you have to be sure of that shape and put that shape cleanly down and yeah. then work over that shape. It just makes you a little faster. I, I kind of miss landscape painting. It's been a while. <laughs> um, oh, but during yeah. the when I got to Gardens of the Galaxy, I was, I was landscaping painting every day. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I find that, that like plein air painting is one of those things that it's, it's almost like every time I've done it, I feel like, I, it's, like it, it's, it's not meant to for me to do like, oh, look at this awesome painting. It's more of like, let me do this thing that's going to totally kick my ass and I'm going to learn from it. Because <laughs> it's really yeah, challenging. Yeah. It's like it's like going to school um, for a couple hours, you know? Because yeah. um, it's, always, cha yeah, it's always challenging, I think. Um, so when you're, um, when you're working on the, these kind of projects, did – do you have like a like a head art director that basically hands out certain characters, um, to and then you you just kind of focus on those, or do you, does it kind of just like oh I'm interested in this one and kind of play with it or? Sometimes, well, at uh, Marvel Studios we have the visual development department, right? We're like full timers at Marvel, so we don't work for any, we don't work under the costume design or under art department. We're we're our own department. And above us is like producers, Kevin Feige, you know, it, it's like we're underneath them. We're like their, their go-to guys for uh, MCU quality, right? We, uh, Marvel Visual Development designs all the heroes and villains of the MCU pretty much. Mm. And then after we find the roadmap, get stuff approved, then it goes on to different departments. Um, so, so sometimes we'd be reading the script or we'd be designing stuff even without the script developed yet or, or the costume designer's not even on board yet. Um, even the director hasn't been thought 
of who's going to do it yet because the comic book the comic books are already there for reference like, yeah. let's say you know Guardians of the Galaxy you have the Marvel Universe uh, handbook and you look at the Guardians of the Galaxy you see who they are and then you could start designing them already um, uh, although they did mix uh, the characters for Guardians of the Galaxy they didn't use exactly like the old school Guardians of the Galaxy guys but but yeah so so then um, once the script is made or there's certain scenes before the script is made that they give to you so uh, aside from doing characters, visual development also designs keyframe art. So that's like the the um, like the most important scenes in the movie, or certain scenes in the movie that would help uh, the director visualize how the scene could look like or how the world would look like. Like uh, for Ant Man, for oh. example, we had to show how the miniature world would look like or how the colors would look like. Would it be more colorful? Would there be a lot of book bouquet? I think it's called. And how blurry should the background be, or how small should you should be? So it's almost like uh, we say we help maybe uh, save time and money, I guess. In well, sometimes it takes so much time to just come up with a character. Sometimes eight months yeah. for like ego. Ego was very long to try to try to figure out because we went uh, the Buck Rogers route or the the um, um, cowboy, you know, space cowboy right? or superhero. Uh, route like how 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 do you look like until they settled on something so we really help kind of guide uh, the production on the look uh, and the look of the film aside from just high level ideas like time like time travel how would that look like for Endgame so th that's something yeah. I was asked to do like uh, so Ryan Minerding is the head of visual development so he handles er everyone gives them their task and then Andy Park is also lead so he's like um director of visual development so he also had certain he used to be called supervisor visual development um and then i'm senior senior visual development artist so i, I work on it but the, but when we hire freelance artists sometimes you know like right now we're a big team right now but back to end game i helped design the time travel for it so something iconic, quick, you know, and and easily like seen that you know their yeah. time. So that, that's well, awesome. To, hey, yeah. do time travel. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for Endgame, I... like oh shit, something we've never seen before, but familiar. Ah, oh, it's so hard. That's so cool hard though, man. Fun. And it it turned out really, man. Like, man, that movie was the movie was awesome. And the time travel thing was really cool. I, I really liked. It was cool seeing all of them in the in the same kind of suits. Um, that yeah. was that was a cool idea. That was awesome. Yeah, I think um um uh for the suits, there's a bunch of people that worked on it, and uh, Wes Wes Bird was one of the guys who, who who got a lot of like approvals for that time suits. Uh, the part that I did was how they would time travel, like them yeah. bouncing onto the things. So I had to like come up with that, but they didn't quite get the angle I was showing. But the idea of them being like a little dot that bounces in that wave oh happened. yeah <laughs> that that was kind of my contribution <laughs> that's awesome now you also uh you, you, you i think you told me that you worked on um uh, the hulk in ragnarok like you helped design yes. how he's going to be in that what was I, that, with, that uh, that's one of my favorite hulks ever um oh, it was awesome. it was so cool man like it you know like i i actually you know the the first two Hulk movies they did. Uh, there was like before the Marvel thing uh, with uh, Edward Norton. It's like those movies. Yeah. You you could tell they were still trying to figure out what how to do the Hulk. Um, and you know the first Avengers comes out and it was like oh they got him yeah. like they got him. It's awesome. Yeah. And uh, I just I kept wanting to see him like I, my I love that scene where he first changes when he's on the ship going after Scarlet. You know. Oh but, man. But seeing it in Thor Ragnarok, um, in that was what was so great too about that movie is, I love how creative Marvel was because you're you're totally taking these characters out of out of what everyone's comfortable with to this whole new place, and I couldn't wait to see the Hulk. Like what's what's he went up with him, and when he comes out, you're just like, whoa, that's the, that's the best. It was so good. That's awesome, man. Like so when you worked on that. Um, that must have been a blast, like coming up with yeah. the different looks I mean, for. The idea for that Hulk is from the Planet Hulk, you know, the comic book yeah. Planet Hulk. Yeah. So from there, and then the and then the cartoon came out, right? And I think 
because I'm a big fan of the Hulk. I love the Hulk ever since yeah. I was younger. Five years oh, old, yeah. I think the Hulk was one of the guys I really liked. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know why, maybe because he's just so strong, right? He's just Hulk. Oh, yeah. Right? Just smashes things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from, from, uh, from already liking Hulk that much, and um, of course, Jack Kirby's design sense came into play. Um, the final design actually was done by Ryan, Ryan Meinerding, and some of the images I've had that, that stayed was my armor piece, that, that yeah. blue armor set. So uh, Kevin Feige like, really liked that, or, and the directors really liked Taika, Taika is, is such an awesome director to work for. He's just such a funny guy, and his storytelling oh, yeah. is so awesome. So when they're able to put that together, like put Planet Hulk in a Thor movie, it's like wow, you know, it's amazing. And it, um, it was so funny too. Like the the humor was just perfect. It just was like a, a, such a good blend. Because that's that's the thing like, about the first two Thor movies. They're like, um, what's his name? Chris uh, Chris uh, Hemsworth. The dude the dude is hilarious. And <laughs> yeah, like, and and in the first two Thor movies, he had opportunity a couple times where he was funny. Um, and it worked well with his character, like because he, he, you know, at first he's kind of like douchey, like I'm, you know, yeah, I'm so, so awesome, awesome, you know. Um, but seeing him in that situation, oh yeah, but seeing him in that situation at Thor Ragnarok, where he's, you know, completely like humbled, you know, head shaven and everything else, it was it was such a good character development in that film. Yeah, uh, it was just so much fun to watch that. It was. Just awesome. I, say, um, I was listening to something. I forgot what it was. Like when when they were talking about how Thor's arc from the very first Thor to Endgame yeah. was really an amazing arc for him. You know, oh, being yeah. home and losing his family, and he's like really got really emotional. So, and then yeah. you see the funniness come out because he's trying to you know not think about his his family dying, and then now his brother's the only one left. You know. Oh yeah. Well, that was that was so great too in in uh, Endgame, when the, just like this the little nuances that they were doing, like when when he sees his mom again, and you know uh, yeah. she tells him you should, maybe you should eat a salad, and like just <laughs> everything about that, like where where he's like, uh, where, how does I forget how it goes exactly, but basically she's like, he, when he says something like, yeah, I I am from the future, <laughs> but like, it's but. So like, awesome. But you, he, he like went from being this big guy to like this. You just wanted to give him a hug, you know. Like you could, you could just yeah. feel for him. But uh, that's what I love about these movies is like they really pull you in, you know. The characters, just, you know, they're not even. You don't see, even see him as how they see, like like Iron Man is is Tony Stark. You know who Tony is, right? Yeah. You don't think of him as the super. You think of him as the person. Yeah. And Captain America, right? It's like not Captain America. You know, Steve, Steve, yeah. that's what it is. They, they, they kind of portray them more as characters, as people that you yeah. could relate to than just superheroes. I think that's what's so awesome about what Marvel is able to do. And, you know, when working there, uh, they, uh, they're they they're able to take other, other even, you know, visual development guys um, um, takes on certain characters. Because when we do our keyframes, we have to show like emotion in it, too. Yeah. And, um, sometimes you could, uh, yeah, you could you could suggest uh, this movement or that one because we do animatics. Sometimes we do some of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's the kind of directors they choose, you know. That oh yeah. Life to these characters. It's that's that's such an awesome experience. I mean, to be able to, like, I, I mean, it's it's so it's got to be so cool just the the overall development of it, you know. I mean, I I just I'm just thinking about, man, you get to do this. For a for a living, it's awesome. <laughs> That's the coolest just thing ever, man. General for a living, right? Just, <laughs> yeah, because you're able to do art and oh yeah, it's the best. Art direction, you're like yeah. Um, but uh, going back to what you're saying, like working at Marvel, like the uh, what's the what's the process, right? Yeah. So it, you're not guided as much. Um, I think we've been working in the industry for a while now that. That when the artists that work there are 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 trusted to you know to given like uh, here's another example with uh, Ryan a asked me if I could uh, do a battle between Doctor Strange and Thanos for Infinity War it has to be like something very different right mm. and, and that was it just come up with something new something fresher it was it was a very difficult challenge but um, 
I was able to come up with some ideas that didn't quite make it exactly in the movie, but the idea went through where the moon, you know, the moon being broken up. Yeah. That came from my ideas of this storm of uh, asteroids that as I was explaining, the, the pitch was he would be um, get, um, taking comets out of its orbits and then breaking planets and moons and these rocks would just come down on, on Star Trek Strange. And, and it's just so... It's fulfilling when I see it on screen. Yeah. And even the bell with the fire. <laughs> it's got to be I awesome. Hope. So I, I have a question about that. That makes me wonder about this is like, so when you see the movie for the first time, like you're not sure exactly, right? Like what's been used exact all the way or do you, are you pretty familiar with it the whole way? Cause I mean, is well, it a surprise when you see it for the first time? You're like, Whoa, that's yeah. so awesome. That's like my idea. You know, I mean, it's gotta be exciting. It's some of the shots, yeah, it's pretty close to what we're doing. And costume-wise, mostly in the costume part is where you see I, I have more of that kind of reaction. It's like, wow, they kept all that stuff, like the Dora Malachi, They kept my design for the necklace is exactly like it. Actually, the Dora Malachi is pretty close to the the approved design. You know, so I think that's the most proud I am. Wait, which uh, one's that one? Which, the which Dora Malachi is for Black Panther. You know, the... Um, uh, the bodyguards, the female oh, bodyguards. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. The Dora Malaje. Okoye is the general with the bald head. Oh, you know, speaking uh, of, let's look at some of the art while we talk about this because we've got some cool hmm. art. Let me, uh, tell me if you see this. Um, like this. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's Okoye. That's awesome. Malaje. Man, that's, so... That's so intricate too. So you just you're just playing around. What was your influence for for some of this? So with this one, I was like, um, so initially I made the sketches first because you know I always like African tribal you know costumes and 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 not just costumes but the actual tribal wear already. When I was working fantasy stuff, I was always trying to incorporate that and um, uh, Filipino tribal stuff that also has some like samurai influences and um um uh, like what, what like native american stuff too mm -hmm. um but but initially i'd sketch them all out first and see how i would put it together in in my kind of my voice from from you know the years i've already been using these as as uh, references so when i put it together it was actually kind of um, how do you say this? Um, uh, trying to balance uh, um, practicality with uh, costume design that kind of still resembles what the Dora Milaje is in the comics. Yeah. Because in the comic books, they, they show more skin, and I wanted to cover their whole bodies and just show the head. Because if you're um, if you're in Wakanda and you have to have this kind of armor set that's still kind of high tech, but still traditional looking yeah no totally yeah, so it's a mixture of all these things that's what was so cool i love first of all that's so awesome you get to work on black panther too um yeah, but like the the uh costume design in that movie was so cool it was i love the different tribes when they do the fighting on, in the water and the, yeah just all yeah. the different variations um it was so just aw and the cool thing was is what i liked about it was about these designs is that it's it's all familiar in a way, like we're we've seen this kind of stuff before, but not in this way, you know. Like it was, I thought it was really cool mixing the high tech, um, like basic genius of what these people are with still the really awesome tribal clothing and everything. It was so cool. Oh, it was thanks, awesome. Man. I, I so appreciate it. This like this all, oh, this designs that. almost all my everything. I've tried to approve before that didn't get approved, and then it all came down all to this one image. Because um, so I used to cool. work in games before, like Project Offset games, uh, this company called Project Offset, and I had my Dark Elves were kind of, they had the same form language as this guy, so I, I used a lot of those things to get um, uh, my basic shapes first down, but you could see a lot of the samurai influence in here too, like yeah. how it's weird, right? Um, but still, uh, you know, Ruth, Ruth Carter is the costume designer for the film, and when she took this and made it into reality, it 
it's she just did a really great job with that and she won an oscar for it so i feel like i won one too you know <laughs> you did man <laughs> that's awesome yeah. no that's got to be really cool too i mean someone actually has to make this <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean yeah. Maybe, i wonder if part of her is like God damn, did you have to do so many beads? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. getting yeah, mad at you for it. <laughs> that's, what make, that's what makes it really, you know, that, that tribal feeling. And it's, it's, yeah, it um, like made for you the weaving and stuff like that. That's like, so I had to, so the rough version, of this, uh, so the uh, a rough version was approved. And then I had to go into here and actually, I would get like photo textures and find actual beads and, and build it with real photo beads. You know, so I didn't have to paint too much, except the base. I'd paint the base, yeah, and then I'd photos in each, you know, to to build like that little thing over here, and then um, the the necklace I, I I painted that I didn't couldn't find any <laughs> reference for it really, and that shoulder pad was was something totally just out of my brain. I, yeah, I think they'd go for it, making her asymmetrical. Because she's the younger of the two, right? Um, Okoye is more very um, symmetrical because she's very traditional yeah. and she's rigid. While well, she's younger, so I wanted her to feel like like unbalanced, you know. And and she, she and her weapon is like the rounder weapon, so she's a little more open for change. So I try to put symbolism in some of the stuff I do. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. That's awesome. Is it? Oh, this is cool. It's a Groot concept. <laughs> Yeah, that was the approved concept for Baby Groot. That's awesome. Uh, That's so cool. They made it look so much better in the movie, though. You know? And that was back in 2000, does that say 13? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's right. how long ago you started working on it? That's crazy. 2012 was when I started working on it. Oh, my gosh. It's like yeah. what, eight years ago or whatever? Yeah, seven, seven. Eight, you're right. Eight years ago, yeah. Man, I didn't realize. Man, that's crazy that it was that... I never, and, and when did the first one actually come out? It was it 2016 or 15? Maybe 14. Really? IMDb or something. Oh, I'll have to look it up. For some reason, it doesn't seem. It seems like it's newer than that, but maybe not. No. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the other part of that one. That's so cool. Man, that's a lot of bead work. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is cool. This is awesome too. Those. Uh, he was also very. It was fun working with Doctor Strange. We were trying to come up with how magic would look like in in this world. So this is another avenue that Marvel was going into a brand new direction. So the magic for Doctor Strange cannot look like the light show for you know Guardians of the Galaxy. It has to have a mystery to it. Mm. So we had to like figure out how light looks like there um, and how you. I guess travel from one place to another. Yeah. Oh yeah, it makes sense. Like making it a whole new, you know, it, it is. That's pretty cool, man. It's it's interesting to think of it that way, because yeah, you don't want to just. You, you, these are all people that exist in the same universe, but they all have their own worlds, you know. So yeah, yeah. There's there's different things that are going to be different, but things that unify at the same time. It's yeah. Awesome. I definitely uh, when when designing stuff like this, you want to have the other. Uh, worlds open like other characters let's say the thor design loki design from that world and up so that i could see okay i want it to feel like a marvel film but it should be like a different genre of a marvel film so this one's more yeah. like on the horror side yeah you know but not quite horror but you know and the oh, ancient yeah. of, of how they feel right the the handmade feeling of this for example because it has to feel like it's never been um uh, colonized their, their 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 country's never been colonized that's so cool man oh, this is an awesome image yeah that's, like, that's one of my favorite ones so this is an example of the keyframe stuff they would ask us to do which would still inform special effects how the lightning colors should be or how much uh, smaller lightnings versus bigger lightnings because i had the one big lightning first and then smaller lightnings coming out of the big lightning and and I had done like five or six versions until they settled with this one. That's so cool. That's so awesome. Like, like this alone, like, I mean, you growing up doing comics, like this is like a comic book cover. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's <laughs> yeah. so awesome. But it's even cooler because it's like, no, dude, it's more than a comic book cover because 
this is influencing what's actually going to be in the movie. It's so that's such an awesome thing, man. That's got to be yep, so, so cool. I still wish I could do a comic book, you know, because I I really oh, yeah. want comic book artists before, and I I went into creature design, and you know, really fell into fantasy art and design, and you know, and yeah. I never. I was thinking to myself, when I when am I gonna come back to my comic book stuff? But you know, maybe someday. Hopefully, I get to. If anybody's listening to this, to this please, I want to do a comic book cover. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that would be awesome, man. By the way, do you have kids? Yeah, I have two kids. Do they think that you're the coolest dad in the world? He works on <laughs> Marvel. It's got to be yeah, cool. Yeah, they're pretty good keeping you know keeping quiet with stuff. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, awesome. they're, my son, my kids actually are my insp- in- inspiration for Baby Groot. My son is special. Oh, okay. Like three year old body is exactly. I kind of used his body exactly. For oh, Baby. you know, what? I think I saw this. Is that like? Was that like a? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. There's another one where he's like dancing a little bit. Um, I think before that image. Is it? Oh. Yeah, that one. So that's pretty much his. His body. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool, yeah. man. Um, years ago, I, I worked. Uh, I worked on um, Alice in Wonderland with Bobby Chu, and um, oh man, I I, uh, I used my my daughter at the time. It was like four, maybe, and yeah. um, I I I helped design the Tweedles, and um, I remember like taking photos. She looks nothing like them, obviously, but I remember just taking photos of her just giving me certain expressions, you know, to, to like help yeah, yeah. create it. And, um, just little things that are, that are, that are funny that ended it's, up in the movie. Look, like, like, uh, somewhere I want to see it. I want to see those designs. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you. Yeah. I'll send it to you. But, uh, I, uh, I want, I was at lunch with my daughter. Um, and these two kids came up, they're like identical twins and it has it's just a coincidence because you know the twin the tweedles are twins but they had this like real transparent skin on their forehead and i could see all these veins like these blue veins going through their skin and i was like oh that's cool so i went home after lunch or to my studio and i started painting these veins in into the tweedles and it was so cool when the movie came out and you see that like they that's part of the character and i'm like that's all that's on the movie forever because i happen to see these kids at a park and it gave me that idea, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so, so cool. Yeah. Those are the things sometimes that come to you when you just see things, you know, around your environment. Oh, you know, it's so funny. Speaking of kids, my daughter, Ava, she's uh, she just sent me a text because she knows I'm talking with you. And she said, <laughs> she said, can you ask him that if he could edit or change any Marvel character, who would he change and, and why? <laughs> that's oh, a pretty good question. Yeah. What a good question. Wow. How old is your She's daughter? 12. 12. Wow, that's yeah. a smart question. Wow. <laughs> um, she literally just texted me that. <laughs> no way. That, okay. That's the, uh, it's hard. It's hard to like think of the, the, movie that, the movies that are out now, right? Something to change. Yeah. It, feels like, it feels like there's nothing I would change. I, I can't think of anything really. It, it feels like you get so much satisfaction working on these films and a lot of input through the development of all the designs, even though if yours is not approved, you kind of are happy with what comes out, you know, just like, like, um, I don't know. I can't think of any, any, I'll I'll tell you, I'll tell you one that, that I think that I think of. Yeah. That, (laughs) and I have, obviously (laughs) I have, it doesn't really matter because I didn't work on it, but, the one thing, cause I, like we were talking before, I love the Hulk so much. By the way, I want to see the Hulk thing. That we, where was that? There we go. Um, I love the Hulk so much. The one thing about Endgame that bothered me, I loved that he looked more like Mark Ruffalo, that he's, yeah. like, he's like a combination of the, the, the two of them now. And I love that he's talking. He was hilarious. Mark the Hulk. only thing that bothered me was that he wasn't as big as he was before. And I know it's because it's a mix between the two, but I don't care. I like my Hulk big. And that's the <laughs> yeah. thing that bothered me. I wanted him to be the same size as he was in Thor Ragnarok because he's the Hulk. He's supposed to be huge and crazy. That's but and I, and I just, that's the only thing that, that kind of bummed me out about that was, I was just like, oh, he's so little. He's like, you know, it's he's weird. still awesome. 
And it yeah. was it was hilarious when when the time traveling when he's when he's like pretending to like smash things. He's like, oh, <laughs> you know, it was all hilarious. But I just wanted him bigger. So that's my only thing. That's a but great observation. You know, I, I think I didn't even notice that he's bigger. But now that you mention it, it's like I was thinking, yeah, he was really huge at at uh, Thor Ragnarok. Oh, he's huge. He's, yeah. So he's not yeah. the same size in the next movie. And I think it's just because they did the combination. He's like kind of both characters now at once. Yeah, yeah you're right. So I get so, why they did it, but when I did that shoulder thing, that shoulder thing is so thick. You know, yeah. You know, there's some people that are complaining. Why does he have armor? You know, why does Thor have armor? Uh, I mean, Hulk have armor in Thor Ragnarok. Because it's it, cool. Before the movie came out, <laughs> before the movie, they were like wondering. Oh. You know, if you've seen Planet Hulk, you'll know why. And he yeah. looks cool with armor too. You know. Oh yeah, I like it. Yeah, it looks you awesome. Know, what, one design um, challenge, not, not really a really heavy challenge, but I was trying to decide, should he wear shoes or no shoes? Yeah. It, it's such a weird thing to think about, but it, it is something <laughs> that you thought of, you know, Hulk can't wear shoes, you know, yeah. or, or maybe sandals because you kind of want to see his toes and <laughs> I end up not putting anything on. So I feel like his, his feet are like hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love, by the way, in this in this painting here, I love um, his his left foot that's going back. How you just suggested, it's just like just a few brush strokes like, that's really well handled. That shows like a movement and everything. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, oh, I'm so happy you liked it. Yeah, it's it's a cool. It's a man. It's so much fun. <laughs> so cool, man. I, I I see what you're saying. Like you tried the sandals in this one. Um, it's kind of like almost like Roman. Back in the Coliseum type idea, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I tried boots on him too. It just feels it feels weird on the Hulk. Like yeah. I feel like he doesn't want any clothing. And if he's gonna get armor, like that armor, it should be the thickest, biggest armor, you know, that no one else yeah. could wear. It's like Nobody a piece of ship or something. It's yeah. Like, what's... <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's one of the best scenes in the whole movie too, when they fight. It's so good. I wish you so could see some of these. Um, Taser face. That guy was so yeah. fun too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Face. <laughs> At first, I was thinking he was going to be, I thought he was going to be really like badass. I'm so cool, you know. But then I, this is where sometimes you have to read the script. I forget to read it <laughs> or, or certain parts. You have to read it because uh, Taika made sure to explain that he is trying to be cool. He's not cool. He's trying yeah. to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's what was so great about it and the the, the whole thing with with uh what's his name rocket just that that, that was just brilliant making fun of him yeah oh, this, this is cool too man this is a cool image yeah that's one of the ones that i was trying to come up with epic battles um and it, it's awesome when when in the movie they translate it as um butterflies after he does that fire thing and it becomes butterflies like the purple i had back there i didn't know exactly what it was i just wanted it to change from red to kind of purple uh, droplets or something. And then they, when, when they did it, it, it was just, wow, you know, just taking it to the next level. Of that's completion. so cool. See, like that stuff I didn't know. I didn't know that's, you know, I know they liked this, but I didn't know they were actually going to use it. And the way they made it um, just was, was better than what I, what I thought of. Well, that's cool though. I mean, it's, it's awesome to like, to be able to, you know, I, I, I mean, it's it's what a cool thing, you know, to be able to just like you're, you know, free to just come up with anything, and then it is, there's, just, there's just to see if it works, and you know, it's just like a a, a play box, you know, a sandbox, just yeah. to play in and explore. And the cool thing that I, th I imagine would be so much fun is that these characters are just already so much fun to play with already. Like, what 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 could we yeah. make them do and like. You know, that's so cool, and then, man. And pushing the rings to do this stuff, I, I wasn't sure because I was like still, when, you, when you're designing, you want to come up with crazy ideas, but then ideas that could also kind of be made, you know, and, and ideas that are not too expensive and expensive ideas, right? Like I was saying earlier, like, but then they also wanted me to really push, just go crazy with it. That's what Ryan kind of told me. I was like, just go crazy with it. Anything big, epic. And and just to let you know that, what, like with this image, I, I was bringing the sun and a black hole together, and then him kind of manipulating what was happening to use the black hole because the gravity was really strong in the black hole. So using that to to 
to like take apart this sun you know oh, so that's I, awesome yeah so i watch a lot of cosmos you know that kind of yeah. <laughs> and a lot of science movies or documentaries i felt like i was trying to use like real life science in the images that's awesome that's so cool man no, yeah, go this back. Is so cool, man. Thanks again for having me here. I, of I love course, talking man. to you. I wish you got to talk more at the show. <laughs> oh, I know. For the VIP lounge and all that. No, you like, know, what? I never, party. I never made it to the, uh, you know, I never made it to the VIP lounge. Um, it was weird because just like you, like, like Bobby invited me to to the convention, and um, he asked if I would be on an illustration panel, and then if I would do, um, a demo at one one day, and then I. What was the other thing I did? Um, oh, then I, I did a portfolio review as well. So, but in between that, I, w- I was at my booth, um, and because I was at the booth, I didn't I didn't have anyone to help me out really, so I couldn't leave. Yeah. And then, luckily, a friend of mine that lives in in um, uh, Long Beach, he came. He's an illustrator friend of mine, and he came and actually hung out at my booth a little bit, and I got to like walk around. I think once, oh, yeah. and so I didn't really get to leave my booth m- much. Um, I was it was cool though. I mean, I. I it was amazing how many people I, I met that knew my work and um, yeah, yeah. I, I felt like super old <laughs> because like, <laughs> like yeah. there were so many people that came up to me. They were like, man, I've been following your work for 15 years. It's so great to finally meet you. And one guy came up to me and goes, man, we learned about you in school. I'm like, what? Like, what, like, what, what do you mean you learned about me in school? Like, so that was really trippy. I've been, it was, I've been following your work for seven years. Like when I got in Marvel. Oh, I that's how awesome. I found it. Through Bobby Chu. Oh, Bobby cool. Bobby Chu Schoolism. That's how I found your work. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it was really cool, man. It was a really cool experience. And there's so many awesome artists. I felt a little bummed just because I didn't – I felt like I didn't get to – like I, one of my friends, uh, Walter Tulp, he's this awesome guy from um, uh, the Netherlands. And I got to hang out with him briefly. Um, I wish I could have spent way more time hanging out with him. Um, and then – uh, Justin Coral Kaufman, uh, he's an amazing artist. Yeah, yeah, I got to hang out and with I, him. Yeah, I got to hang with him a little bit. Um, but it's just like I, I wanted to hang out more, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it was just, it was so busy, and but overall, I thought that Lightbox was just such an awesome. It was especially for the first yeah. year, it was amazing. Bobby Chu is a genius, man. He yeah, definitely he did. So well. Yeah, he did so. Well. He's, <laughs> he's awesome. A, guy. He's awesome. I, I almost feel like I don't think I want a booth next year so I could walk around more. I was kind of <laughs> thinking the same thing. Like, like I, I don't, I wouldn't mind doing a demo and like, I actually, I don't know if you, so I, I set up a, to, I was, my plan was to sit there and do an oil painting. Um, yeah, I saw that. But I started, but then it just got too crazy to, you know, talking with too many people, yeah. um, which is a good thing. But um, I never, you know, but I was thinking, yeah, next year if I go, Maybe maybe I won't do a booth and I'll just like do like workshop or something and then just m- mingle and meet people more and you know because yeah. there's so to- much awesome stuff or I need help. Someone, <laughs> yeah, helping and then selling your prints because you know it seems yeah. like a good place to sell prints. That's yeah. like, my book actually did better than you know a lot of people. Friends helped me out, bought some of the books. The first day I sold like 14 books. Oh, that's and the awesome. second day, 22 books. And then the third day, I think 17 again. So it's like, it, it was pretty good. You know, I have to sell it online or something. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, oh, yeah, you definitely should. It's a good book. There's a lot of awesome. And yeah. we, we, and that, that's one thing, too, we can promote um, on this. Um, we'll do that. We can do that at the end. But, um, yes. but this, uh, so now with, but, this, with this character here, uh, for for uh, this was for Thor Ragnarok. You had to come up with a whole new look. Is that what was going on with this one? Yeah, yeah, for Loki. Yeah, because the original artist that designed that is um, is uh, Charlie Wen, which he used to be co uh, head of visual development. And he's a really good friend of mine. He he's the guy who got me in Marvel. Oh, so, okay, cool. But yeah, he was just hiring me for three weeks first to do Aliens. And then it just went, you know, they liked my work and we just kept on going with it. Uh, but it, it was such a relief that, um, uh, you know, Taika wanted a brand new uh, Loki costume and helmet. So now I don't have to be reliant on Charlie's design. And because, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing design. He, he designed uh, on the first uh, Thor. 
he designed all the costumes for uh, the oh, that's uh, cool. characters. Yeah, and just that vi- language of armor just is, is amazing. But yeah, so for this one, uh, Taika wanted a brand new one, and he didn't want it to look anything like a androgynous, you know, or anything like Asgard. Asgard. So I had I had to come up with something like uh, like that that had um, Jack Kirby inspired stuff. Mm. But I still had a little bit of of uh, Asgardian stuff in there, and, and the helmet that I used was one of my favorite ones, where the the top is open, and yeah. not the helmet. That's like in the comic books. That's my favorite helmet, you know. And 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 when I, I was designing this this costume, I always thought about the character, what he's going through, um, and and the same thing. I love asymmetry. So yeah. his mom just died, his dad just died, you know, his sister's going after him. And he's not sure if he'll be good or bad. So a lot of my design language I was doing was kind of diagonal. So everything was was not mm. balanced. And the struggle inside that he's having. And even the purple you see uh, inside is almost like a symbol for like death and mourning. So I feel like he's still mourning the loss. So I put some of those colors within. And That's so cool, man, that you have all that like hidden like beneath the surface ideas and the design like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's it, so it, cool. It feels like it helps me put some more emotion into the piece. Yeah. You know? But in, in the end, it became more symmetrical in the movie because I think the asymmetry, maybe there was some heart, the costume designer had maybe some trouble trying to make it work. Um, and even the, you know, that little, the little shape that's over here and the, I don't know if you could put it up on, on your screen. The key design. If you zoom in to oh, the let's see. There I go. To, yeah. It, it, are you gonna put it on, on your screen? Or oh, can you can or you not is, see it? No, I, I don't I need to see it, but your record hey. Yeah, I'll 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 edit it in. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, that little that little check mark or the V mark, that that was funny how that came to be was because you know, I was thinking he had to be in with the crowd with the uh, with the grandmaster and they're all like rich noble people and at first i was thinking he should have chains like a lot of bling bling right and it just felt so weird um uh, can you, can yeah, you see that, it now yeah that little piece like in the middle oh, uh, yeah. that little piece yeah. i was thinking that would be like a big l that says loki like you know one of those <laughs> big l's for like rap rappers would have like these chains oh that's and stuff. funny <laughs> yeah because he wanted to be you know all bling bling in and all like uh flossing you know <laughs> and then and eventually um from that idea it just boiled down to just this one little piece that feels like uh, a centerpiece for to echo as guardian design uh maybe something from his mom or or a uh, family crest or something mm. you know so and then it became just that simple kind of v uh, oh. It's really L and L sideways. That's why it's kind of uh, oh. not not um, not mirrored exactly. So one's shorter than the other. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool, man. Uh, thanks. Thank you. This one, this is crazy too, man. Yeah, if you zoom in like to the to the mouth of that, they just called him uh, uh, something. They gave a nickname to him, Chin. Uh, Ah, teeth. I think they're just calling him Teeth Chin or something like that. I forgot because my theme <laughs> there was just all teeth, a lot yeah. of gums and a lot of teeth layered over top of each other. Yeah, it's gross, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, James really wanted. He had a reference for the uh, mole rat, I think, furless mole rat or something like that. He yeah. wanted it like that. Like this, so, like that, th- that definitely reminds me, like the, the skin texture here and everything, it totally reminds me of, of like, like a hairless rodent. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. It's gross. Oh, so, <laughs> I hate, I hate rodents so much. It's disgusting. <laughs> Ugh. It's These disgusting. are fun. I'm a yeah, little that's, more, that's I've a been doing piece. feature design for a while, so th- this actually took like a week to get approved. So. And this is that creature that's at the very beginning right when they're um when uh what's his name uh jumps inside and thinks yes, that he, yeah he yeah. gets swallowed <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> awesome man 
Yeah, so funny. That was the, one of the most epic opening se- scenes. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. it was. That was awesome. There was this other character that I wanted. Oh, is this, this was from Guardians as well, right? Yes, that's one of the original Guardians, Charlie Twenty Seven, I think. This is the character I knew when growing up when I first started collecting Marvel Universe, and I remember him a lot. So when they put this guy in the end tag, I was like, man, I was all over it. You know, it's awesome. That's so cool. I love I love the brushwork on this too. That's so cool. Ah, uh, thank you. He was brown at first, and then I did like a yellow and black uh, version of him. Yeah, it's cool. That's the one thing I really like about the Guardian movies is just how colorful. So cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is cool to see that. I I see. It's to cool see them together. Yeah. This is the actual version that uh, that uh, Ryan Coogler saw. And um, the story was he really like liked it. I wish I was there to see because I'm not really in the meetings. Um, yeah. And at first they wanted him them to be, um, how do you say? They wanted other versions like you know color green or blue and and uh, s- to help my pitch a little more, I wanted to put it in the story setting. So I wanted them to feel like you know lionesses in the Serengeti, mm. uh, hunting. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so this, yeah. So, you know, when you're so, doing designs for Marvel, you got to put put a lot of, like, uh, elicit an emotion in your designs as much as possible. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's going to help sell it, too. Cause you yeah, can, yeah, it's exactly. It's going to help them imagine what it's going to look like, you know. I like, yeah. I, I like to, it's like, it's cool. I like your, uh, your style of your painting, uh, like, with the background here, when the rocks and everything, it's just, it's, like, nice and loose and painterly, but it's, it's, you know, I'm looking at it from a, from an artist point of view. Like, you know, yeah. besides how the character design, like it's really cool how you handle some of this um, background stuff. It's cool. Thank you. It's got a cool look to it. Now, what's this one from? Is That's this Dormammu. a version it's... of Dormammu for uh, uh, Doctor Strange? Oh, okay. If you That's... zoom in to his finger, you'd see Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that now. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Oh, that part was awesome, man. Man, yeah. That's, that's so cool. I was wondering how... I really like Doctor Strange. It came out really cool. Oh, yeah. Just for that, that. that was another one of those movies that I'm like, how are they going to make that cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they did, of course. You know, surprise, yeah. surprise. This is awesome. They've been just hitting it out of the park every every show, just one billion. Oh yeah. Dollars every. Oh yeah. I think we earn it sometimes. It's like, well, how can we top ourselves next time? The next one, the next one. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's what's so cool, man. It's so no. I have a question too. Like you do a lot of costumes and stuff, um, so it's not just about the actual character design, like what the creature looks like, but. Like you said, you, you dress them, and so yeah. you, you you like you're full on basically doing fashion design for aliens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. In a way, it is it is like that. I yeah. I, I try to actually because I'm I'm in the customers guild, and I thought before I got to Marvel, I thought I was going to work more with costumes, and I wanted to make sure I know the process, and I wanted to be a costume designer myself, um, you know, but. Um, but I wasn't, um, uh, I didn't have the experience yet. And I was trying to teach myself. So as I was teaching myself, I was realizing, oh, I, I need to know stitching. I need to know layering and all that stuff to make my designs uh, be makeable, right? Because I don't want to make an awesome design people like and then they can't make it. So mm. in designing things, I, I keep those things in mind where how did they move? You know, is this going to buckle a certain way? Yeah, um, the back. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's 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 a lot. I mean, <laughs> that's just funny. I, I was just noticing when I'm looking at a lot of these, it's like, man, you got to know a lot about actual designing clothing because I mean, everything looks workable, and um, it's one thing just to come up with something, but the fact that it actually works or w- would work, you know? Yeah, it would work. Some yeah. of it, of course, it you know you need the collaboration. The costume designer really helps out a lot in designing the final look because you know once this is on the character uh, on, on a real person 
some things have to be changed to you know make it feel more cohesive or or more like flexible when they move um but uh overall there are there's certain main pieces that need to be the cut the way it should because then then that makes sure it can work you know i i it's hard to explain what it is. I, I could only draw it out like, you know, like the t-shirt shape for a vest, you know, that could be used uh, with the under shirt underneath it so that it could have a certain, um, like a overlap that mm. you need that you could use, you know, certain straps should go in certain places. And since, you know, we've been doing it for a while, we know what straps to use in certain spots and just change the shape of it uh, or, or how big it is to, to, but still stay within the parameters of something that could be made. Oh yeah. That's so cool, man. That's so interesting. That's awesome, man. No, I was in the panel of uh, last year's, not this year, last year's comic Con, in the black Panther panel with Ruth Carter and, um, and, and a bunch of the other costume designers. And we were all like trying to explain how this whole stuff happens. And, um, what's nice about uh, Ruth, she was able to, you know, she let people know that, I'm I'm like the architect for uh, the Dora Milaje and some of the other designs, and um, I uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is it's still a big collaboration with within everyone. Yeah. Even though we get the you know this dev gets the stuff approved first, but uh, knowing how they work it would uh, so we help facilitate how they work and not just come up with something that they can make. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It's definitely a huge collaboration. It's crazy. It's awesome. Um, I have uh, some questions I want to, or from oh, yeah, someone yeah. wrote in. So I want to make sure. Let's see. Let's see here. Uh, let me know if we're back. If you see me. Yes, um, I see. Yeah. You do see me. Yep. Yeah. All right. Hold on a second. I don't see me, so <laughs> I don't see. I mean, I don't see you. Um. Oh. Weird. This is weird. Hold on a second. Good thing about this is I can edit this, but <laughs> all right. So let me try this again. So I see now. I see you. Do you see me? I see me really big. Oh, this is weird. Hold on. Stop sharing. Did that do anything? I see you now. You do see me. I see you. That's the big one, and then I see my small window okay, for good. me. So we can see each other. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So um, so I've got this question uh, from Tom. Hold on one second. Let me look here. Um, Tom Faraci. Faraci. Um, he wrote in a few questions. So he said, um, um, are you usually assigned to one project at a time, or do you juggle multiple characters from multiple films in different stages? And then do you ever get stuck and have to move on to something else or do you have to power through and make the current assignment your sole focus? Um, and he said, thank you very much. He's a huge fan. So, uh, Good question, Tom. Thanks for the question. Um, it's, um, uh, I, I do work on multiple projects at the same time sometimes. Um, for example, I was on Doctor Strange while we were doing, um, Ant while I was on Ant-Man. And at one point, I was on um, Endgame, Infinity War, uh, uh, Thor, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, wow. little bits of these. Because it overlaps. <clears throat> not at the same time, exactly. It's almost like Thor's ending and then Black Panther starting. And in the middle of Black Panther, all hands on deck to do like this one character that we we're having difficulty with. Um, stuff like that. And, um, and in terms of... of uh, there is a challenge of going from one kind of Doctor Strange genre look to a Black Panther. You got to change your mindset in a way. So yeah, there needs to be a time to like just relax, like maybe on the weekends, just to like okay, do something else, and then and then slowly set up your mind for cosmic stuff, you know, or watch mm. watch Star Wars or something to get that feel again. Because sometimes it's is this mute or even have music that get you to that feeling or images that would yeah. tribal images to get you back. But it had to be a little bit interesting when you went on to do uh, 
uh, Infinity War and Endgame because now you're like combining all of these. I mean, that's what's so epic, amazing is combining all of these characters from different places all into one film, and they all have to react and be believable together, right? So yeah. was, that, was that a little bit kind of weird? Like, wait a minute, <laughs> like, well, like the writing was really well done. You know, I, he, he the Russo brothers was able to decide on teams, yeah. uh, separate them so that they could tell the story based on the type of team together and just coming up with that kind of combination was um was awesome and yes putting like how how uh because iron man was with spider-man and guardians of the galaxy right and and that's more in space so kind of the look kind of look like more space space style i guess for like guardians of the galaxy i always use guardians of the galaxy as as the touchstone for or, or Thor, like those are the two that okay. If we're gonna do any space stuff, it's, it has to look like that. And yeah. then Avengers are more like Earth stuff, you know. And then magic is Doctor Strange. So when Doctor Strange was fighting against Thanos, the thing I was, that was in my head was Guardians and Doctor Strange because Thanos is from space, so Thanos should have that kind of Guardians of the Galaxy oh, yeah. look. Yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's all. That's yeah, man. That's so crazy. That. That's it was so awesome just to see all those things together, man. It was so it's it's pretty cool, man. Yeah, like I mean, bringing my childhood Spider-Man to life. Awesome. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, it's yeah. funny too. Like Spider-Man: Homecoming. Um, I, you know, after Infinity, or after Endgame, I was I was a little nervous to see Spider-Man: Homecoming because I was like, End- Endgame was so epic and so huge. Yeah. And it was awesome. And it's like, now we're going to back to a solo movie with Spider-Man. And I'm yeah, like, I don't know, man. How, how are you going to, how are you going to like, you know, compete with how epic, but I thought Homecoming was awesome. Like, it's like, I think it's one of the well, best Spider-Man far, movies far ever. So or Far From Home. About. Far From yeah. Home. That's right. Sorry. I yeah. thought that movie, like, so it, it totally blew my expectations. I was like, oh man, he's finally Spider-Man. Like he really yeah. becomes Spider-Man in the movie. And just yes. again, what we were talking about earlier about how the cool thing about Marvel is they just capture certain just snapshots that I remember from the comics. And there were so many great Spider-Man moments in that, which is like his poses, like swinging through yeah. the air and just like, you're like, oh, you got him. Like one of my favorite Spider-Man things. And it's so little and it's in um, it's in uh, Infinity War is when Peter Parker jumps off the bus and swings under the bridge and you see him swing up and you see his little teeny silhouette in the air in the when he, yeah. he's up in the air and he's just got like that pose he's not even in the spider-man suit but just that little thing was like yes <laughs> it just was like right from the comics you know like oh this is the fanboy in us it's just oh yeah it just my heart it's just so Ah, what a time! What a time to have all my, these. My daughter. Awesome uh, I think I'm, an, I'm a, like like when we watched it, I was like, oh, watch this! Watch how cool that little thing. You're such a dork, Dad. Like, <laughs> getting so excited about this little thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, real quick before Hopefully we I answered that question by Tom. Oh no, no, that totally. That's great. Because yeah, the power I, through stuff, you power through this thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, we've got. Um, a handful of fan art that I wanted to show you too before we, we end yeah. this thing. So um, let me show you this. Tell me if you see this. Do you see yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Cool. Wow. So, yeah, this is the first one. This one's by er- Lars Eric Robinson. Wait, that's awesome. Wow. Thank you. That looks, it looks <laughs> like me. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, it's funny. My daughter must have I've heard I've never had said. anybody draw me before. <laughs> my daughter must have heard what, what we were just talking about because she sent me another text it says nah dude i'm a marvel nerd too <laughs> <laughs> well i was talking about my 16 year old <laughs> she thinks i'm a total dork um so yeah this one's by lars and then this one is by cena v oh wow cena uh, that looks awesome cena the baby grew on my shoulder wow that's cool <laughs> Don't you wish that there was a real baby Groot you could just walk around yeah. with your pet? I, I got a 
sometimes they would give away these posts, these uh, cutouts uh, mm. from work posters, and I would get it. You know, I actually have a a cutout of of Baby Root on on uh, Star Lord's shoulder. It's not here though. It's in the other room. I'd get it if. <laughs> Maybe I'll get uh, towards the end. I'll get it for you. <laughs> so I do. Wait, awesome. you know what? Let me do it. Okay, let, after, after this, after this. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it after this. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is funny. This is by Dominic uh, Zeilinger. Zeilinger, sorry. Uh, great shapes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's, it's, really I, I lo- it's almost like a logo. That it's is. Very, that yeah, is. Been, wow. <laughs> it's very cool. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think it's really cool. Yeah, he's he sends stuff in like uh, he's sent in for a lot of uh, my podcasts, and he always has really smart design. Really yeah, cool. yeah, I want to do something for you, one of your podcasts one of these days. <laughs> that would be awesome, man. Let me draw something. Oh, that's cool this, too. This is uh, by Reza Josani. <laughs> uh, for some reason, when I was thinking fan art, I was thinking art for like Marvel, but I forgot. It's like yeah. It's stuff and it's that's no it's it's part of part of the fun on schoolism i took your class in there oh wow that's awesome (laughs) it's awesome yeah i i didn't didn't realize that that's so cool that's cool cool. this one is by uh, adita bahasser wow wow these are man i need copies of these i need to share them on my instagram yeah I'll, i'll email them to you um that's the last one if you want to, uh, their Instagrams too. If they sent, you know, so I could give them a shout out. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, let me see. Make sure I'm back. And then, do, did you want to run and get? Uh, oh yeah, man. Cool. <laughs> I, I would love if you had chance to do one of me. You do one of me. I, oh, I would I, love to do that. I'll try. To, I'll try to do one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on. Let me let me get the thing. All right. I'm gonna... Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. This is one of our cutouts. This is my I daughter wanted like to say. Hey, hey. My daughter wanted to say hi. 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 How are you? Hey. You're also a big fan, right? <laughs> What's your name? Uh, what? She, Ava. 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 She's my Marvel, my other Marvel nerd buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Nice meeting you. Are you an artist too? She loves to draw too, or no music? She writes. She's working on her first book right now. It's like what six chapters so far. Wow. She's been working hard. She's writing a whole book right now. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. Hold on. Here's another thing. Let me show you this. This is something you might like. I got this one too. I just like to just get collected because it's an incredible hug. Um, so when they would throw it away, I just oh, can I get it? I'll put it on my wall. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. so that's... Okay. I'll see it. Good to see you. Now, now go away. I'm doing my podcast. <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs> Great meeting you. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Um, so, uh, before we, we end this thing, um, is there anything that you want to promote like your book, like, or, like let people know how they can get a copy and, oh, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So we got to sell some books for you. Yes, please. If anybody could, this is my book, Uber monster oh, classics on it. Um, but yeah, I actually, I don't have it up yet. To sell, but if they could email me, and okay. I could just get the information that way. My email is um, ubermonster.anthony at gmail.com, and cool. then they could order it from there, and then I'll give them information after. Sweet, that's awesome. I'm gonna do this again. Oh, so okay. it's this book, and then so it's like um. Take some of the images and. Oh, that's awesome. This was like for Seven Sun. I worked on Seven Sun. The dragon design was like my design. And they did a lot of Magic the Gathering artwork in here. Oh, cool. You know? 
That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So everyone, go out there and get that book because that's really cool. I saw it in person, and it's a really cool book, man. It's awesome. I wish I got to get. I didn't get to give you one. Uh, that's okay. We'll 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 swap. Maybe maybe yes. we can do a swap. I'll send you. Do you have a copy of my hardcover book? This this is the book that I got, I have. That I, uh, here, this is your oh, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is one of my favorites. Did <laughs> cool. you have another Thanks, book? This is the only um, no. That's the that's the last one that I did. Um, uh, the the I have a first book I did. Bobby made me do um, in two thousand six or seven, and it was funny because I didn't want to do. I felt weird doing a book because I'm like who. I always felt like when I, you know, maybe when I'm like an 80 year old man and and I'm if I yeah, really become yeah, successful, yeah. someone can make a book about me. But he was like, no man, trust me, you, you got to make a book and and so I did it. And then I was like all weird about it because I was like, okay, but I don't want to put the the word caricature on it anywhere because I don't want people just to think I just do caricature and and yeah. you know um, and also like people when people think of caricature they think of like theme park caricature artist but there's nothing wrong with that but that's not what i do i was like over analyzing everything and exactly. he's like yeah. and then and i was like i so i just don't want the word caricature on the cover i just want it to be like you know the art of jason siler or something like that and the title ended up being caricature the art of jason siler <laughs> so so uh he, he won that one and then and then in 2008 or 2009 i can't remember i think it was 2009 i came out with my own book that was a bigger hardcover book and it's basically you know, kind of like a portfolio book. It's got a bunch of pieces of my work. And then it's got like a tutorial, like a painting tutorial in it. Um, and then that book, I wanted to do something different where I wanted to, I wanted it to be something that like if, when I, if I, when I was learning, I wish I had a book like that. Cause I wanted it to be a book, of, but it, yeah, it shows my work, but it also explains the struggle, the passion, what it's like working with art directors, deadlines, and then there's, of course, there's interviews with art directors from Time Magazine and everybody else. And yeah, that was very. So, and then you had the video connected to that, like videos yeah. you could watch. So, I that's why I got this book and I watched the videos. And there's another, another one. I but of course the schoolism one is is another one that was really good. But yeah, it's really helpful and just the level of quality you get with your paintings is just wow. This is amazing. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's a, uh, I, I mean, you know what it's like. It's a, it's just, I, it's, it's great to be able to make a living doing what you love to do, drawing and painting, and, you know, it's uh, a, yeah. it's, sometimes it's crazy, sometimes it's, you know, it's, it, it can be stressful. Like with me, it's, I'm sure that the, like the difference between what I do and what you do, I mean, I'm sure you probably have some crazy deadlines as well, but yeah. the thing with, with that I'm still, I don't know if you ever get used to it. Is like, um, I'm always just like deadline to deadline to deadline. So I, it's like, almost, it's almost like ha having, having a baby, but not getting to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. like I just, uh, you know, r work like two days straight, just nonstop, just like trying to get this cover finished. Cause some, a lot yeah. of times I only have two days to do a cover. Um, wow. and, and, and then I don't even have time to like reflect on it or think about it. And then next thing you know, it's, it's printed and it's gone. And then a week later I might look back at it and go, Oh man, there's so many things I wish I could have done differently. And it's, but I shouldn't be yeah. so hard on myself cause I only had two days and yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's just weird. It's, 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 you know, I'm happy to be busy, but it's one of those things that, uh, like I, I've been really it's busy like, lately I and it's, yeah. And it's just like. Sometimes you feel like you don't get – there's not enough time to actually think about it more because I just have to get into it, you know? Um, yeah. It's like trying a new process or trying something, yeah. but then you kind of go into this pattern now that, oh, I want to try something, but I can't because I need to get this done. So I need to yeah. do it the way, I, the way I know that's most efficient, you know, yeah. sometimes, and it's not as creative. And you want to be more creative. Yeah, that's that's the thing too is like, you know, especially – it's different when when it's portrait work because I basically just have to paint how someone really looks for something. But but with the caricature work, I, I wish I could explore more. You know. Yeah. And sometimes clients don't let you. They don't want you to. You know. They want it like it's got to be. Um, I actually did one today, I, or I, it just got published today. Um, it's on my Instagram today, but um, 
I actually, this one was a lot of fun. Like they just wanted a straightforward caricature of this guy in the cover. Um, and it was so much fun because the guy's got like these real bug eyes, like really, you know, his eyes are huge and really buggy and they, they just wanted to capture that expression. So it was a real straightforward, just caricature on the cover. It wasn't like he wasn't doing anything. Like normally I have to like, like someone's doing something or whatever. This was literally just. My face, <laughs> and it's really funny because it's like you don't usually see that on a magazine cover, um, and it was really fun because I actually got to exaggerate a little bit more and have yeah. fun with his yeah. character and push it a little bit more. It, it could have been pushed way more, but <laughs> but um, you know, you you, you got to make everybody happy. So <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah that's, you know, you know that's how it is. You you, you have like the art director, the director, and the like editors, you got editors. You gotta like. Yeah. Everyone wants to say something, but sometimes you just wait for the main person that needs to say something about it, but then still get what the director wants. You know, yeah. it was. It was I it was, did a. That's a real, skill in itself. Real quick story. Um, uh, when I did, I did a cover for Time this last year, and they and i was so surprised that they wanted me to do a caricature cover because normally they they want like more realistic type portrait work or illustration and they they wanted caricature i'm like oh this is so cool i get to do a caricature cover for time magazine like that's awesome that's that's like so exciting and so i and it was trump and pelosi and i was like oh man <laughs> you know trump's going to see it so yeah. i was like i'm going to have so much fun with this <laughs> yeah. yeah oh man and i did all these sketches like i was i wanted to 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 really explore his shapes and i wanted it to be funny i wanted people to go this, yeah and i wanted trump to get mad that, uh, you know what i mean i wanted him to look at him and go like god damn it yes, yes. Time, time magazine is fake news okay fake news whoever that artist is he's a piece of shit okay you know i wanted that i wanted wow, him that's to, awesome how you, you got him exactly <laughs> That's but, really good, man. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> but I wanted him to tweet about that. My goal was when I was working on it, I'm like, I want him to tweet about this. You know, every, every time I, I do a Trump, I want him to tweet about it. But he does so far. He's been containing himself, which I'm kind of shocked yeah, that he has. But good. but um, when I sent them my sketches of Pelosi and Trump, they were like, Pelosi's great, but let's try to make her a little prettier, a little less wrinkles. I'm like, ah. Oh. Because she's a funny looking person too, and she's interesting. She's got her eyes are sunken in, and you know. Yeah. But so I had to picture she put it as her Twitter uh, banner. No, because they had like a little thing that happened Pelosi and you know when they had a meeting at the White House or something, <laughs> and then she he was kind of saying something about her. Oh, she did a meltdown. But the picture looks like she's in in a position of power telling him what to do and then it was meant to be something against her but now she you used made, it as her own oh that's hilarious yeah no, I, gotta, I gotta check that out um and th but then uh, when i when i sent them my sketches of trump yeah i was expecting them you know because i didn't think that they were pro-trump and they're not really but they were like oh no 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 we can't no these are we can't do because i was basically making them look like a toad pretty much oh. he, he was like it was pretty funny um it would have been great i would have loved for that to be on the cover but oh i gotta see it send it to me i want to see what yeah, you want I'll, I'll show you some of the rough sketches but uh the what ended up being on it was they actually showed the back of his head he's shooting tweets at her and um and so it that was fun to, it, was, it was a fun challenge to try to caricature him from the back because yeah. you, you only see like the, the back of his head and the side of his face and then he's shooting tweets at Pelosi, and so you see her, and she's like flinging subpoenas back at him. Uh, it was a fun cover, but um, and again, but people, a lot of people don't realize I only had like a few days, you know. So it's like you got to work fast. You got to really work fast. So my sketches were um, in, in situations like that. My sketches tend to be really um, like c kind of rough, and they're not like beautiful sketches. You know what I mean? They're like real, like just basic form and shape and you can see um and then once they approve the idea then i kind of refine it a little bit and then just start painting because i only have a couple days so yeah yeah but, but anyways um we should probably we should probably uh end this it's uh an yeah. hour and 35 <laughs> minutes <laughs> <laughs> so 
But I, I really it's, appreciate I you taking the time. You. Yeah, this is great, man. Yeah. Thank you That's so much for doing this. Talking with you will take a while. <laughs> it's not like a short because I enjoy you know what we're talking about. You know, next no, time great. you come over here, we definitely next time you visit, visit like longer so you can hang out. Oh yeah, no, I'd love to come hang out. That'd be really yeah. cool. Awesome, yeah. man. Oh, you know what? One last thing before we go, I forgot yeah. to do this. It's really important. Is I have oh, to yeah. I have to do serious questions with Jason Seiler. Okay. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I, I am Groot. I'm Groot. I'm Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> I, I am Groot. I I am Groot. I'm I am I am Groot. I am I am Groot. I'm Groot. I'm Groot. <laughs> I am I am Groot. We are we are Groot. We are Groot. We are Groot. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that was serious questions with Jason Seiler. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, man. It's been really cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me again. And, you know, I got to get back to work. But it's been <laughs> awesome. Awesome hanging out. Cool, man. Uh, hopefully right. have you on there again sometime. Here's my oh, daughter. Oh, well, for sure. She's, she's here getting ready Hi. for gymnastics <laughs> class. Whoa, man. Go kill it at gymnastics. That's awesome. Yeah, so that's Jason. <laughs> He's the guy who, who painted this stuff. In this it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. She's an artist, too. She likes to write. Oh, that's She's awesome. also a jiu-jitsu champion when she was nine. Whoa. I'm Bro, not going to mess with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't choke me out. She's <laughs> competing for gymnastics stuff now. That's awesome. Her first competition uh, season. <laughs> that's so cool. She, all right, I'll see you. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome. Amelie, her name's Amelie. Like oh, the movie awesome. Amelie, that French movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Cool, yeah, man. My son's Constantine. Constantine? From, yeah. Oh, that's From, awesome. <laughs> they got some epic names, man. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so he's, cool, man. He's actually a regional champion in gymnastics. Really? Yeah. This, wow. This year, one regional champion. And uh, he was, uh, last year, he was a Pan Am Jiu-Jitsu champion, world champion, too. Wow. So those two, I always brag about them. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. You're, you're uh, raising some bodyguards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like... They're going to be a stuntman for the next Marvel film. <laughs> so... <laughs> that, that's so awesome. Come flipping in the screen. Yeah. That's so cool. Awesome, man. All well, right. Well, th thanks again. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll definitely stay in touch. And um it's, oh, it's, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'll talk to you later.